The, the way that we keep it all together is we have a Bible um, that, that Mark put together uh, that everybody reads and then forgets about. Um, but, but since I'm the publisher, I've read every single one, and, and it's incumbent on me to make sure that uh, they all stay true to the, uh, to the Bible. The stories we've read capture our attention and immerse our minds in settings of all kinds to bring us the spectrum of feelings and deliver the tale of tales to our starving psyches. Whether it's medieval-style fantasy with mages and knights. Or hard sci-fi takes on the future of space colonization. Or thrillers set in your backyard. World building is the foundation that holds up the narrative. The glue that keeps it from unraveling as readers follow the journey you laid out for them. All to make the stories jump from the pages and burn themselves into our memories. Welcome, weary writers, to Book Career in a Year's network of podcasts. This is Worlds Asunder, an insightful podcast on world and character building. My co-host is the one and only David Shadoin, better known as Shady. It's not just a descriptor, it's also his moniker. And she's the H.Y. Gregor, but you can call her Haley or Sour Patch, your friend post-apocalyptic wasteland elf. We know, we know. We have nearly a score of published novels and short stories between us, but who the hell are we to teach you about world building and character development? We get it, which is why we decided to call in some favors. Each week, we pull from a list of the best and brightest authors, editors, and publishers to give tips and guidance on tackling the age-old questions and provide you with tools on how to accomplish world building like the pros. From environment to magic to characters, how do we strike a balance between what matters to our audiences and what matters to keep it all straight? Open up your ear holes and your minds and get ready for us to tear worlds asunder. So, if you're ready, just knock and enter. Let me tell you a story. Actually, there is too much. Let me sum up. We're still having audio issues. It's the same audio recording uh, that we used previously. So I apologize in advance that some of it is still a little off. Uh, it didn't quite get balanced right, but we will work on fixing it for future episodes. Thanks again for watching. So there, you know, we, we kind of mentioned it at the beginning, um, and, and we talked about it a little bit. That we are aiming kind of at the new authors, but we're also aiming at some of the you know the middle tier authors, people people like me who have a couple of publishing credits to their name, but we're still mm -hmm. developing our careers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, but, you know, Stephen King said the first million words you write is crap. So till right. till you till you get, you know, real close. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, I I, I say that kind of jokingly, but. You know, as, as I look back on, on my writing career and what I've done and, um, you know, there, there is a long period of, you know, development, you know, and, and, and I think as a writer, you're always developing. If you're not, you know, that's a problem. But, but really, somewhere around the, the, the million word part, you finally figure out, you know, what you're doing and how to do it right, right, you know, whatever right is for you. Yeah. Um, but, but I went back and, and read my first books and said, oh my God, how did people read this? This is awful. This is, and, and I, had to, I had to go back and, and redo them and, and re-release them, you know, the, the first three or four. And, you know, the, the next ones, you know, equally could, could be done, you know, done over. And it's like. See, I cheated. I picked up a co-author who is much better at this than I am. And so that made my first book a lot more readable. Well, I, absolutely, and, and doing co-writes is a great way to, to learn. I mean, I, by the time I wrote with David Weber, I had 45 books that I'd written, I think, maybe more than that, and, and I learned more writing that book than I had in the, the, you know, the 45 before it. Um, you know, obviously writing with somebody of, of his caliber is, is uh, a great uh, opportunity, a, a blessing, a, you know, whatever you want to call it. It, it certainly was uh, something that was wonderful to do and, um, you know, I, I learned a ton from it that, that I now try and pass on to, you know, all of the, all of the people in CKP. And we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Um, and so often I think that we think of writing as a solitary thing. You mm -hmm. know, there's that romantic figure of the, you know, either in the cave or the tower, depending on 
the writer you're referencing, um, that they're just, you know, working on their own. Um, but I think that for shared worlds and for co-writing, which CKP is really known for, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we have we have some really big uh, shared universes. Yeah, and a lot of co-written novels. A lot. Um, yep. So and I think <clears> that a lot of people they do get their start like that. Um, and I am learning to co-write, which is a whole other beast. Um, mm -hmm. But but I, but I, I like co-writing. Mm -hmm. um, not only can you complete things faster. Um, but but it, it's like that whole shared world thing where you've got people coming in with different ideas. Yeah, the ping pong. Uh, yeah, and and uh, I've had some of the the best experiences co-writing. Um, you know, the the main storyline books for the Four Horsemen universe are, are Mark and I, and and neither of us are outliners. Um, but but we you know so so when we start. <laughs> Do something book series. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so we'll, we'll, okay, we're starting here. We need to get there. Um, and we always do. But, but a lot of times we go wee over to here and then wee over to here and, and then get there, you know. But it seems like the readers love that, right? Because it, yeah. it demonstrates like the breadth of everything. And I know that like genre wise, it's all science fiction, but you have written something that is vastly different as far as like subgenre and subtype, um, sort of like a noir thing. And then you have your murder kitties and everything else. So the, mm -hmm. you guys have really tested like the different options that are available in subgenres. Mm -hmm. I'm an author who masquerades as a mill sci-fi author. I have yet to actually write a mill sci-fi story, <laughs> but. Uh, well. Uh, Companion to Ghosts it's is a noir, a noir buddy cop <laughs> book that's going to come out under their mill sci-fi title. But it, but it's it's got mill sci-fi stuff in it there. Does a little bit. It's, <laughs> it's like John Wick meets L.A. Confidential. And by the time this comes out, that book that book will have been out because uh, this will come out probably in July. So that book will have been out about two months by then. So go hit it up. But there's my shameless self plug, self -plug. Nick. Thanks. <laughs> Um, and, and shoot, by that time, uh, it'd be pretty close to the audiobook for it coming out. Yeah, check that out. Um, but kind of, kind of rewinding just a little bit, we, we were talking about the different levels of of authors, you know, especially kind of in a mill sci-fi world-building aspect of it. And and you brought up Stephen King's Million Words thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to world build, what would you tell you? Would you give different advice to the different levels of authors on how much world building they need to do before they start putting words on paper? Um, every author is different. <laughs> uh, I mean, um, I probably do less before uh, I start writing and, and bring it in as necessary, you know, as, as I need it. Um, usually, you know, even even for me, I've I've done it a number of different ways, um, depending on who I'm working with. You know, even even when I'm by myself, sometimes I do quite a bit of it. Uh, sometimes I do less. Um, when I was writing with David Weber, the the first book that we did, uh, we were getting ready to you know to start on it, and and we were shooting for about a hundred thousand word book. Uh, he said, "I really want to keep it. I really want to keep it to a hundred thousand. And I'm like, "Okay, I can. I can help with that. I can. I can keep short. it." <laughs> yeah. Well, for him, I mean, yeah. he writes door stoppers, and and a hundred thousand word book isn't going to stop a door. Um, so so we're getting ready to do it, and he says, "Okay, well, I I put together a little bit of the the world building on this, and and he gives me a document that's two hundred thousand words long, <laughs> and I'm like, wait." We're only writing a hundred thousand word book. Why do I need to read two hundred thousand? But but that's he he's a firm believer in doing all of the the world building first and and in getting down into the the nitty gritty details of each, each race and why they do what they do and and what their ethos and you know so he's you he's amazing uh, in in that I I I'd rather write the book. He's probably written a million words of world building. <clears throat> Um, oh, in the last five books alone. Yeah. yeah. So how I do you mean, decide what to incorporate? Like what's important to readers? What's interesting? Because sometimes you have to have stuff that's just fun. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you decide or how do you decide what to exclude? Um, what's the the, does, it, does it move the story along? Is it important to the story? Uh, if it is, then then yeah. You, so we you don't need, need to, to know about how certain alien race like grows their wheat. We just need to know that they have bread. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I, unless unless it's going to become an issue where you know a, a famine has wiped out you know the crops or somebody came in and firebombed their one only place that they can grow it because this is the only place that the climate is right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it is it important to the story. If not, then you know it's like logistics when you're writing mill sci-fi. Logistics is is incredibly important to winning a battle, but it's boring. It is so boring. Nobody wants to read about it, um, unless you're going to go in and take out their supply lines. Then it becomes very important, yeah. you know. And other than that, you know, or or you're not getting bullets fast enough. Why not, you know? And all of a sudden now there's there's a, a reason to have the logistics in there that normally just kind of operates in the in the background, you know, the uh, system of money, system of of commerce and finance. Mm -hmm. You know, most people just accept it. You know, you you know how you know how money works. You don't have to explain it. And you know, it's so to explain somebody, you know, how how the money works. I know how money works, unless it's something different and it's important to the story. So, lest any new authors out there think that writing two hundred thousand words of world building is normal, it is not. And if you are not like David Weber levels of prolific. You, you gotta cap uh, uh, that a little, or you're, you'll never write the book. I right. think that that's a common thing that yeah, that new uh, run into. right. And and you know somebody somebody said uh, just write the book. Mm -hmm. You know you uh, who was it? Oh God, uh, I can see him. Kevin Eichenberry keeps on. No no no. It, uh, anyway, one of the one of the masters. It'll you know you as soon as yeah. As soon as soon as we finish. Um, you know, write the book, write it till the end, then go back. You know, a lot of, a lot of new authors start writing and then they, they write the first chapter and then they go back and edit and then they, you know, oh, change that up and oh, change that. Uh, write the second chapter, oh, let's go back and oh, does it integrate with the first chapter? Does it? And, and you tie yourself down so much that, that you don't really accomplish the story. Um, you know, the, from a psychology perspective, um, you know, editing uses a different part of the brain than your creative side. You know, you've got the analytical, you've got the creative. So when you're trying to edit while you're writing, your brain is in opposition. So, you know, you're, you're making yourself less creative by doing it. Just, you know, write the, write the story and then go back and edit. Write to completion. Haley just learned something today. That's why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, well, it makes makes sense, right? Well, and transitioning, I'm thinking because I recently have just made the transition from a heavy edit to mm -hmm. outlining to I'm about to jump back into drafting. And there's always that moment where you you hate whatever you're doing for the first little bit because I was just editing and I was in the groove and then that stopped and I hit the wall and now I don't remember how to write anymore. <laughs> right. It's the same. Because it, it, you're you're using the one side of your brain, one side of your brain runs, and then you try and flip over and do the other. And it is agonizing for the first little bit. And and that's that's why typically I write first thing in the morning when I when I'm fresh and creative. You know, I'll I'll do the, all of the writing for the day, um, and then I flip over and do editing. Um, or, you know, uh, whatever the, the business stuff is that uses the, the analytical side. And usually it's right around lunchtime, so there's a good break there yeah. as, I, as I swap over from one to the other. Caffeine, carbohydrates, sugar, <laughs> field news. So is there, and you've probably already touched on it a little bit, but is there one piece of world building that if you could go back and talk to, you know, recently retired or, or were you, I can't remember, were you still active when you started writing? Um, no, I had retired. I, um, I, had, I, I did 20 years in the Navy, then I was a elementary school principal for uh, five years, and, and then I was doing uh, government service work. Um, and it, I started writing when I, <laughs> actually about the time I was out of a job. Uh, uh, and I had just started, I had just started uh, to work again, but I didn't have a clearance, and it was a clearance job. So I would have to go in to work every day, but I couldn't do anything because I didn't have my clearance yet. But if I didn't go, they didn't pay me. And, and I'd been out of work for nine months, and, and I really <laughs> needed to get paid. Um, we had just moved from uh, Pennsylvania back to Virginia Beach, and it was right as, as all of the, the government contractors were 
releasing people. They didn't want to hire anybody, and uh, that's what I was looking for. Virginia wouldn't honor my principal certificate because um, they're jerks. Um, so I, you know, I, I basically was, uh, I'd go in and, and read CNN all day. And, and I saw this one thing on uh, the Chinese were looking to bring some cars to the Detroit Auto Show. And, and I was like, as I was driving home, I'm like, well, if they did that, you know half the people they bring are going to be spies. And, and if this, then that, and then this, then that. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's a good story. That would be a great story. I said, I should write that down. I'm trying to remember the title of that book. I can see the cover in my head. Uh-huh. It takes place in Seattle, right? It takes place in Seattle. Um, and I, I went back and forth, and I'm like, yeah, that'd be a great book. I should write it down. But, but what would I ever do with it? I'm, I'm not an English major. I don't know anybody in the, the business. I don't know anything about writing. But it'd be really cool. And, and, you know, I went back and forth as I was driving home, and I got home, and uh, I, had, I had talked myself out of it. I wasn't going to do it. You know, who am I to write a, who am I to write a story? Um, and, and I walked in, and my wife said, hey, dinner's going to be a little late because uh, life... And I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I'll write this down. So I pulled out my laptop, started typing, and uh, she said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm writing a story. <laughs> and she said, no, really, what are you doing? Because <laughs> it was so far from, from anything that, that I'd ever done. Yeah. Um, we, we, as a team, she's the creative one. I was the analytical one. I helped the kids with science and math. She helped them with the creative projects. Um, and so there I was doing the creative thing and, and she was like, what? Um, and now look at you guys. And, and it's gone a little ways from there. That was Red Tide. Okay. Shoot, I was real close. Yeah, the, the second book was Occupied Seattle. Okay. Yeah, I, could, I, I looked at the covers this morning and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, he wrote those. You that's, cheated. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, and, and, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> yeah. But so, okay, so if you go back to younger you when you first started that creative process, uh -huh. what would you tell, what, what is the one thing you would tell, you know, newbie author you about world building? The, the thing to not either not get caught up on or something that you... Don't, don't let it prevent you from writing the story like, like we were talking about. I mean, you know, it's, it's good to know where your story is set. It's great to do, you know, the, the world building you need, but, but it is secondary to the story. So, you know, it's, don't, don't let it drag you down where that's all you do. You know, like you said, most people don't write 200,000 word world building documents. And in fact, I only know one person who does. But, but then again, he's had a pretty good... Yeah. Clearly it's working. Pretty good career, so maybe maybe he's right and I'm wrong. And Well, so here's something that... So I've written one short story in mm -hmm. Glory You, mm -hmm. um, and it was co-written, and I really needed my co-author to, like, hold my hand because mm -hmm. I was incredibly intimidated <clears throat> coming in. I think at the time there were only 80-something books mm -hmm. uh, last year. But but still, that's... Oh, my God. Yeah, only... There's there's this <laughs> massive... Yeah, so I was kind of paralyzed jumping mm -hmm. into it because I I overthought it mm -hmm. as I do, um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of other you know yeah who oh it's it's easy yeah, absolutely that's easy to do. So for people who are trying to maybe start getting into a, a venture similar to this, or mm -hmm. you know if they want to write a four horseman story, uh -huh. um, how do or how would you encourage them to kind of get over? being overwhelmed or what should they focus on to try to start um, learning? What's the most important aspect? Well, what, if, if somebody was going to write in the Four Horsemen universe, and I'll, I'll just use that as the example, um, say we, we have the next um, open call, mm -hmm. which you know happens, we typically do about two a year. So whenever you see this, you're probably within two or three months of, of one, one way or the other. Um, you know, when, when people say, hey, I'd, I'd like to do that, but do I really need to read all, all 90 books? No, you don't need to read all 90 books. You, you read, the, um, read the Bible, you know, which we put together so that you understand the, the way the universe works. That's a 10-page thing, I think. Yeah, I was surprised at how good <clears throat> it was, actually. Yeah, it, it's just, it's got the basics, and, and I tell everybody, read a book or two, mm -hmm. just so you get the feel for how the, the stories are written. And and it, it typically doesn't even matter, you know, which books you pick out of the 93. Um, you know, it's, it's probably help, more helpful to pick either 
one that Mark and I wrote or, you know, some, one of the other core authors just, yeah. you know, so you know that the, um, the, the tech and everything is, is super tight. Um, but, you know, and, and tell your story. Um, the, the rest of the, the trappings, you know, can be, can be added on and massaged once, once you have the story done. Um, you know, and like I said, I've, I've had a number of stories that, you know, we did have to go, okay, well, instead of this thing, let's, instead of calling it a Y, let's call it an X and, and then, you know, that'll work. Know anything about that? Um, it was an edit I got. <laughs> and trust your editors, right? That's the other advantage is the continuity editors that are familiar. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, <clears throat> and, and I think that's, that's probably one of the hardest things that, you know, for, for new authors to wrap, wrap themselves around is being edited mm -hmm. because everybody has, has pride of authorship. Yeah. This is my baby. I worked on this for, you know, in some cases years. I don't, I don't want somebody to tell me I'm wrong. I don't want somebody to, you know, and, and <laughs> happily for me, um, when I was in the Navy, I was uh, an admin officer at one, in one squadron, and I had a CO that uh, had to put his thumbprint on every single thing that went through. I, I could not get anything through without him even, you know, doing something as little as changing big puppy to little dog. He, he would make at least one change. And, and I got used to that, and so when I started getting edited, I was like, okay, you want to call it blue rather than cyan? Okay, I don't care. You know, push it, push it through. Let's go. Yeah. And, and, and that, was, that was something like for, for working with you and working with Rob, too, a little bit, mm -hmm. where I got you, like, I like to think that I am not hard to work with when it comes to editing. Now, you guys might think differently from the other, <laughs> but, you know, and, and I will challenge certain aspects where I'm like, yeah, there's a, there's a point that I'm trying to get across here. How can I best do that? And I think, and I think for, for some of our new authors, you know, if you're going to be sitting kind of where I'm at, where, you know, I turned my debut novel in and, and, and I'll even call out the, the edit that you were alluding to, there was a, there was a type of weapon and I had mislabeled it, and I didn't know. I, I thought I had read the, the Bible the right way, and my intent was not to challenge them on that, or to, it was really just to make it fit into the universe that already existed, because the point wasn't the weapon. So I had no real buy-in on that, but when he presented that edit to me, it was a very, it was, it was a real easy thing for me to go, whatever you think, because yes. I'm like, uh, yeah, make it work the way it should work, because that, that wasn't the point of the weapon. The point right. was to, to discuss how right. that tie-in works. And so that's where, you know, <clears throat> there are certain hills I think authors can stand on when it comes to editing because it's your voice or it's, there's a particular idea you're trying to convey. But I think there's a way to compromise more often than not. Right. And, 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 you know, that's, what, that's where I was going with that is learning the, the, the give and take of it yeah. You know, when, when, a, when an editor says, hey, um, you know, look at this, um, you know, there's, they've, they've been doing it a long time. They, they probably, there's probably something to it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it behooves you to, to at least take a look. You know, I don't, I don't require, you know, people take every single edit that's suggested to them. You know, uh, in, in some cases, you know, uh, authors are worried about changing voice and, and that, and then, okay, I get that. You know, I'm, I'm an author too. I'm not only the hair club president, I'm a member. Um, but, but a lot of times, you know, you, people, people don't want to be edited and they won't, they won't take it seriously. And, and I think that that's, you know, that's, that's a problem. Um, you know, like I said, uh, if, if somebody that's been doing it for a while and, and a lot of times works for a, a publishing house, they know what, what the publisher wants and, and are, is trying to do that. So, you know, it's a matter of trying to work with them and, and, okay, well, what if this, what if that, you know, is that okay? Okay, cool. Well, and there are different levels of, of editing too. And you don't run into the developmental edit in the same way in a shared world because it's already right. established. But when right. you're writing your own stuff, 
you start somewhere totally different and people get real precious about that creative license because right. I created this world from from scratch mm-hmm. um, which is you know a little bit you talked about Mark right. dealing with that because that mm-hmm. was his like his it's my baby yeah, his creative development mm-hmm. it was his like brainchild um, and so when other people come in they know that they're adopting something you know that's already there that somebody else has you know emotional attachment to mm-hmm. um, but like Shady when you were working on your you know yours you already knew like the weapons and the things that you were dealing with, you're always like already shaping within that realm. So the developing and edit process is, is totally different. Because okay. Someone says, this is my world and this and this don't hold up. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, for 4 hu it's already, we know it already works. Yeah. So, so funny story about editing. Um, I wrote, wrote my first book, uh, tried to, tried to get a, an agent interested in it. Uh, sent it out to about a hundred, uh, 54, I think, said no. Uh, the other 40-some, I'm still waiting to hear back from. You know, I, I think by this stage the answer is probably no. But the story well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so I was looking at, okay, well then I, I guess I'd heard about this self-publishing thing and, and I thought, you know, hey, maybe I'll, I'll take a look at that. And um, so I, I, you know, studied a bunch and, you know, I'm, I was military, so I know how to plan. So I put together a plan for how I was going to do this and, you know, what all, what all do I need? Editing, cover, you know, all those things. And all right, editing. So I need to send it to an editor. And uh, I sent it, sent it to, uh, you know, somebody. We, we worked out, you know, a contract, uh, sent it to him. And he sent it back and, you know, he, he gave me a bunch of developmental edits. And, and I was like, but that's not editing. That's not what I wanted. I wanted him to tell me if, you know, are the words spelled right? And... You know, so I, you know, I had a lot to learn. Uh, and that's a whole other, that, yeah, that's, that's a whole other series of episodes. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we will definitely go touch on, on some of this stuff too, uh, later on down the road when we, when we really get into kind of the nuts and bolts of world building and we will definitely have Chris back on for, for one of those episodes as well. Oh, thanks. Um, in advance. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I mean, do you have, do you have any other things for, for kind of like, re- you know, we, we wanted to start from the beginning, right? The, this, this first episode was we wanted to talk about where do we start. Um, specifically with you, we aimed kind of on the mill sci-fi side. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we've got John Osborne lined up. We're probably going to look at kind of the urban fantasy, fantasy track. He's, he's actually written the book on world building. He wrote yes, a book on world building. We're real excited about it. But uh, yeah, and speaking of people who have written books for, for helping out authors, yes. you know, one of the things that uh, if, if we don't have him back on for this, somebody else on Book Career in a Year might call him up for it, but uh, Indie Publishing for Profit. Um, and you've got several books under, under essentially the CKP banner for helping out authors. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's part, of a, part of a series. I uh, alluded to John's book on uh, world building. Um, there's, there are six books, I believe, now um, that, that all deal with uh, helping authors. Um, you know, after the, the first uh, couple of years that I'd been writing, I put this together to, to document, you know, what I did, where I went wrong, so that, you know, hopefully other people didn't, didn't follow me in the wrongness. Um, it, and and it, th- that book actually got the best, um, the best comment ever. I was at a uh, convention and, and somebody was, you know, flipping through it. He said, hey, uh, you know, tell me about this book. And, and I was talking, you know, okay, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the few books that does, handles both craft as well as the marketing side, which is important. And, and he was kind of, eh, I don't know. And a uh, young lady that uh, had bought it the year before came, walked by and said, uh, I'm a published author today because I bought that last year. And he was like, sold. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and the other Good selling point for these, um, which seems counterintuitive, but I don't think it is, is that they're fairly short. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you can pick up a thousand author books that are huge or it's a 10 set volume and you have to. We, we intentionally uh, cap it at 40,000 words. Mm-hmm. If you can't say what you need to and you know, in that, then. Yeah, and it, it helps you like keep from being overwhelmed. Like, yeah. Is key for when right. you're first starting, right. you have to look Oh, absolutely, everything. absolutely. And, but it's, it's a two-edged sword mm-hmm. because you don't know what you don't know. Yes. So how do you know what to, what to study, what to do, how to figure this out yeah. when you don't know what you don't know? And that's, and that's what that one was put together for, was to take you through the, the basics of 
you know, getting a, getting a book out and, and making money with it, which, you know, was, was something important to me. Uh, I only had, you know, so much time and uh, I had three kids and they wanted to go to college and if, if there wasn't money in it, I would have had to do something else. Yeah. Well, you've done great, and I know that working for you has been phenomenal. Um, we both have great experiences. Everyone I know has really great things Thanks. to say. So Thanks. So it's, it's been pretty impressive to see how fast everything grew for you. <laughs> it did. It did. It, um, it, it went, you know, from like three books, four books a year to, you know, uh, I think 72, 80, you know, and that doesn't count the foreign translations of which we had, uh, I think, 225 last year. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that much. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, you know, if, if <coughs> they're showing it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then you do audio as well. So yeah. Got yeah. Ebook, ebook, print, and audio for almost all of them. Um, definitely ebook and print for all of them and, and trying to get the ones that, you know, will we'll sell in audio. Yeah. Which is a whole nother. Oh yeah. Topic. Do you have anything anything further for our guest today? You know, I think that that pretty much covers it. I appreciate you, um, especially since, like I said, four issue is is huge. I feel like we could have a whole series just on on that. There would be so much to look into as far as like the different races and different planets. So we we probably should do a series about like developing different races and world building and because. Mm -hmm. For you, they're really unique because a lot of them don't have human references. So figuring right. out how to <clears throat> describe them or like give them certain characteristics without saying he looks like a badger, <laughs> you know, yep. that's, that's huge. So I could keep asking questions for an hour, but we probably don't have time. Oh yeah, no, and, and we could delve much further into this topic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a couple show notes and then we'll we'll close it out here. Um, yeah, so this has been the World Building Worlds Asunder uh, podcast. We are going to be putting this out on Book Career in a Year. Thank you, big thank you to Nick Thacker for hosting us. Um, another big thank you to Chris Kennedy for, for showing up with us today and being being our first guest. And uh, we were, yeah, first victim. And we're real excited to, to victimize him again if he's willing to. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so, uh, you know, well, alrighty then. If, if there's anything you guys want us to cover, any, you know, we, we've got several episodes we've got planned and lined up, different things that we're going to cover. We, like, like Haley said, we could literally go on a lot of this stuff for hours and hours and hours. Um, but we're going to try and cut this down. This episode, uh, we were recording live here at Fantasy um, in April in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And it will probably not come out until about July. So that'll kind of give you a reference, you know, the, some of the references we're making are a couple months old by the time you actually get to listen to this. Um, but we are, you know, we, we just, we've talked about Mark Wandry, we've mentioned Chuck Gannon, we've talked about Dave Weber. We've got plenty of guests that we are, we're looking at trying to get onto this podcast and we'll give Mark plenty of chance to defend himself. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know exactly how to bribe Chuck. So this should be great. Um, yeah, so look look for us weekly uh, coming out here. If there's anything that I haven't discussed, anything that we, we need to need to discuss further, um, any notes, check the show notes for the podcast. We'll uh, we'll leave them there, and links for all of our guests will probably be in the show notes as well. Um, however, uh, since we are we are going to close out here, Chris, where can we find you? You can find me at chriskennedypublishing.com. Uh, if you join the mailing list there, you'll be uh, alerted when the next open call is. Yeah. And, you know, and, and Chris, I know you're always really good about answering questions when you can too. So, um, uh, when, if you do submit to open calls, you know, he will give you plenty of mentorship on that and you can ask for feedback for, I mean, that's what I did. My first short story yeah. was, was hit you up a lot about feedback on it and stuff. So. And even when the answer is no from Chris, sometimes that ends up being still a really good thing, as it was for me. So no's are not necessarily bad, and everything helps. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanna you wanna make sure the audience knows before? I'm good. All right, Haley, where can we find you? Um, I'm H Y Gregor. You can find me at hygregor.com, Facebook H Y Gregor, um, at Tobia H Y on Instagram, which I am trying to learn how to use because I'm a <laughs> Um That's me. I write mostly fantasy, but this is about Chris. Yeah. And you can find me at davidshadoin.com and all of my handles for all the different social media platforms are there. 
as well as all the books that I've published through Chris so far, because that is pretty much the only place I've published is through Chris Kennedy Publishing. So, uh, but yeah, you can check it out there. And I've got links on my website to both Chris Kennedy Publishing and the new Myth imprint as well. Uh, but thank you again, Chris. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Out. Thanks for having me. We'll see you guys next week. Wrap. You've just finished the episode, the one where we started with Chris Kennedy, part two. Hopefully you got some good takeaways from his insights into world building when it comes to a big universe where multiple authors play. And you get to see a little bit of where I got my start as a writer. Thanks for stopping by. As always, links to our guests and to ourselves are in the show notes. And if you head over there, you can follow us on all the different social media platforms. Tune in next week for the one with chaos. I mean, Katie Cross, part one. Don't forget to subscribe and like our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, on this, yes, but if it's post, if it's posting to YouTube, try to hold it off for at least ten minutes. I mean, I'm gonna try to not to, but. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm going to wear my professional face and not. That's fair. But I wasn't really planning on swearing too much, but I know it happens. So well, I was, yeah, I was more just kidding. I. I was I was a principal of a Catholic elementary school. I can I can go a long time without swearing. My my kids never heard me swear oh, yeah. until they were 21, I think. They heard Sheila swear all the time. They never heard me swear. They're like, if you were in the Navy and she wasn't, how come you don't ever swear and she does? Where, where does swearing like a sailor come from? And thanks for your helping us tear the worlds asunder. We'll see you next week.